Hello everyone. My name is Isabel and I'm from the media marketing team. Uh, I want to welcome you to this webinar. Uh, if you are still uh, getting ready for everything, uh, we have just a short introduction. So I will explain you how the tool works and also introduce our presenter. And before we start, uh, uh, a few words on safety. Uh, if you're driving, uh, please uh, stop. Uh, it is uh, better to uh, to have the full attention on uh, the presentation. And also, if you are at home or in the office or somewhere else, make sure that uh, you are in a safe environment and taking the, the necessary measures uh, also against uh, COVID if necessary. So today, uh, we have a very nice presentation. As you probably know and have seen, we have some uh, quite a few new products in our video indexable meaning portfolio. And uh, we know that sometimes it's a little difficult to understand what the right product uh, you need is. Uh, therefore, Mike, uh, Mike Sperake, our regional product specialist for EMEA, has uh, you know, a lot of experience in, in uh, this field and he prepared a guide for you today to help you choose uh, the right shoulder mill for your application. And uh, only for the participants in this webinar, we have a short uh, present, for, uh, small present for you. If uh, you go in the handout section of uh, the control panel, so you, you have uh, this control panel uh, in the webinar that you can use uh, to communicate with us. Uh, so you can ask us questions, you can write your questions in the questions panel. If you have any problems, also just write us a question. And uh, you also have a section where there is material or handouts, depending on the language you're using. Uh, and there you can find a guide that Michael will uh, uh, speak about more, speak more about uh, later. So um, in general, we, we will start with the presentation. Mike uh, will, uh, will present uh, first, and then at the end, we welcome your, Q, your questions in the Q&A session. So, Please prepare your questions. Mike is, uh, is ready to, to answer any doubts that you may have. So Mike, I think we're ready. Uh, I know you have quite a large presentation, so I will leave it to you to start, if I didn't forget anything. Thank you very much, Isabel. Yeah, also good morning. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, to the today's webinar. Yeah. I would like really to welcome uh, to that webinar in this afternoon. I appreciate that you join us here. Um, my name is Mike Sperhake. I'm regional product manager at Vidia since uh, uh, a long time. And uh, yeah, I hope that you, you, you already can see my screen. Yeah, today I will speak about the most versatile indexable milling tools, which is shoulder mills. Um, yeah, they, they are uh, really the, the most versatile products and uh, that maybe is also a bit confusing for you. And uh, yeah, and uh, that's the reason we, we try to, to, to explain you a bit deeper how to choose the best shoulder mill. Yeah, there are various forms of shoulder mill, mills available. Uh, but what makes the choice uh, to, the best one for your approach uh, ma makes it not really easy. And uh, to, to, to give you a certain guidance and help, uh, we want to show you this in, in this webinar and uh, yeah, and how to find an easy way through the jungle of shoulder mills, what we offer, mainly depends on thoughts of uh, material, the milling operations itself, and for sure on economical parameters, uh, and for sure also the environment of the tool. Yeah, if you have any questions, as Isabel already mentioned, uh, please type them in the chat uh, or in the, the, the questionnaire uh, and we will go through that um, in the end of the um, presentation. Also, it's much easier for me to, to really go through that. Yeah, before we go through shoulder milling, I would like to tell you a bit about Vidya if you not already know about Vidya. So um, you should know, you know, first of all, <coughs> Vidya stands for carbide. Um, in, in German, it's much more visible than in other languages for sure. 
and uh, but uh, still if you if you go to a hardware store in, in Germany and ask for for uh, a really a BDR drill you will get a drill which has a small piece of carbide on the top of the drill and uh, with that drill you can drill holes in the wall so that's for sure not the the, the, the approach and the tools we, we we are doing today but uh, that for sure is, is uh, the name is coming from BDR means in German like diamond um, that was a synonym in, 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 the, in the beginning, in, in the time when we started with Vidya. And that's uh, really a long time ago because we started already as a, the first ones to produce carbide and register the trademark in 1925. <coughs> and we get the approval on that in, in 1926 then, uh, finally. And uh, then we really started to produce uh, in Essen, in a, in a lab, uh, ca uh, hard metal, so cemented carbide. Uh, the first year we we, we brought something like uh, one ton uh, around on it, and uh, yeah, from that that was the starting point, uh, and th then it was spread around the world. We gave away also um, uh, uh, licenses that others can produce these kind of material. We started also in 1967 uh, with produ production in India, so that's also our our plan today uh, in India. Um, yeah, and. Uh, 2009, it starts that we, we um, do the new strategy with, with the implementation of other brands of the, the company uh, to, to make a make a complete different media than known from before. Yeah, and also in the, the nowadays, uh, in the, uh, we, we are still arrived with a, a technology like, like Novo. And I will we'll show you some topics about Novo later on, because that's really a revolutionary digital manufacturing advisor. Yeah, and uh, yeah, we are more than, than 95 years old now. So um, that's a very interesting history. By the way, uh, my uh, this picture in, in the background, what you can see here is our old plant buildings in Essen uh, in Germany. And uh, here in that corner, I had my office in the past uh, when I was having already an office. Uh, to, nowadays, I'm working from home as a home office uh, person. Uh, but, but here in that corner, I had already my office in the past. Yeah, uh, nowadays also we, we have not only one production plant, as I mentioned already, uh, the Indian plant uh, here in, uh, uh, in, in, in Bangalore. Um, we also have uh, for sure production places here in US and uh, uh, in, in China. And also that's very interesting in Vietnam. Um, what, what we are doing in Vietnam, uh, that might be uh, something strange for you to have in Vietnam, uh, a high tech um, a facility for, for tools. What we are doing there is we are producing for local producers uh, of uh, smartphones uh, the housings and we are producing for them the, the, the tools in there. So uh, Samsung has big plants in, in, in Vietnam already for, for making uh, smartphone housings and uh, we, we supply them with our tooling there. Yeah, for sure. Uh, also, we have main warehouses to supply everybody uh, around the world uh, easily and uh, in a fast way, as we, we need to do them a uh, 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 fast delivery. So main warehouses are for sure in, in, in US, in Germany, and for sure in Singapore. Uh, so we, we are uh, re really a global brand now, so uh, easy doing with us globally. Yeah, coming to the, to the today's topic, shoulder mills, the most versatile milling tools. Yeah, and uh, I, I wrote in the in the beginning, the best shoulder mill is a very, uh, it's, 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 it's very general what I, what I said. Um, you know, the best shoulder mill is, 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 is you, you cannot have an answer for that. Why? Um, just to give you an example, you know, um, you, you might be uh, around with a car, maybe you have a company car, and uh, if somebody's asking you what is the best car, you won't find a, really an answer to that because that can be the fastest car, that can be for sure the mo most versatile car, that can be an off-road car, that can be uh, uh, the, the, the car with the highest capacity to load for a lorry. So there is no general answer to uh, the, this easy and uh, simple question, what is the best tool? And, um, you know, from, from that perspective, I would like to, to go through this uh, webinar and uh, 
would guide you through the slides and uh, trying to explain you what's important to, to make a good choice for a shoulder mill. Um, basically, we will go through through uh, um, topics like uh, what kind of operations can a shoulder mill do, um, what kind of information I need to make a choice for the correct one, and correct is the same as the best one, you know, uh, that, that can be uh, uh, one answer, but must be not the answer um, for everything. So it's it's very, very uh, challenging to, to to go through that uh, from from that perspective. So what video shoulder mill can do on what application is, is also very important to understand and to, to make a choice. I try to guide you through that a bit through examples, um, really to to make you aware of what what you need to look at, and uh, maybe maybe afterwards you you you'll find the guidance through all that genre. Yeah. Going to the operations of a shoulder mill, what can a shoulder mill all do? So, generally speaking, very versatile, a lot of operations you can do. So, for sure, a face mill can, a shoulder mill can, can do a face milling operation, um, which you can see here on portion one. You can for sure do a 3D profile milling, so it means you go up and down, and you 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 you, you profile really a workpiece. Um, you can go really with pocket milling into full material, like like this operation here. Then we have a deep pocket milling into full material. What's the difference between uh, pocket and deep pocket? For sure, the the length uh, of of the uh, of the tool on and the extension. Uh, is giving you a, a certain um, a challenge in, in stability, um, and uh, this might also uh, end on in, in a really uh, challenging way of uh, looking on that. If you have heard already about dynamic and trochoidal milling, what you might know from from solid carbide end mills for sure, with a in, indexable tool you can do that as well, although. It might have not really all the uh, benefits you might get from a solid carbide end mill because of the dimensions and the lengths you are usually using these kind of tools. And uh, if you go through aggressive ramp milling, you might also know that from uh, the, the uh, um, solid carbide end mills, uh, you can go here into full material via a ramp, uh, which is uh, extremely helpful. In, in, in a lot of things. For sure, if you see a point eight, a contour milling means uh, from outside you, you really uh, create an outside contour. Also, that is possible with a shoulder mill. And uh, face milling with deep cavities with a long reach tool with a portion nine here. Um, it's the same from, from outside. Also, you see it's easy to understand what, what it's meant to be here. A very interesting uh, operation is uh, uh, using z-axis contour plunge milling. Uh, uh, all the words which are which you usually hear with these kind of operations, you can can gather it here um, on on a certain range. What does it mean? You 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 um, have an axial movement of the tool instead of the radial movement. You are usually get used. And uh, some are some of our, our tools are, are much better uh, been um, uh, used in that compared to others. And it's interesting if you, how you can really understand which kind of tools you can use and how you would use it. So I think that's uh, very interesting on on uh, how how many different op operations you can you can use these kind of tools. So very very interesting and. Uh, as I said in the beginning, that makes it also very difficult to find the right one. Yeah, if we speak about the right one, we should think about what kind of information is necessary. What kind of information is, is helpful for making really the choice which kind of tool I should use for what. And for sure, the, the, the main decision on that should be coming from the workpiece material and the workpiece itself. So
So um, it defines really the operations which should be done on the workpiece, ideally by, by a workpiece drawing uh, with, with a final drawing and uh, the raw drawing. Then you, you, you can easily identify the depth of cut, the width of cut, um, and so the, the defined surfaces which might be in, uh, necessary on the workpiece. Uh, this, this is also a very important information of the right tool and what, what can be done by what. For sure, also the environment uh, of, of the tool and uh, the workpiece is important. What is meant by the machine? So generally speaking, you can, can have a three axis or a five axis machine or more axis. Um, the machine can be programmed uh, conventional or even, even without programming. Uh, you, you could be a numeric control and C or a C and C programming. And maybe uh, also, if you come to the, to the next step already, uh, it's been feeded by, by a CAD CAM solution, which gives you much more flexibility and easier to program. Maybe also a good support uh, through the CAM uh, program really to, to find nice, smart um, tooling paths uh, to, to really identify the best um, speed and feed rates. For sure, for the machine is also very important, uh, the spindle connection, power torque, maximum RPMs, coolant options, all that uh, is, is, is important to understand. Uh, really, if you um, want to have a complete picture of the operation, and last but not least, the level of economy is extremely important. Um, just just to, to have a, a few examples on that, if, if you need to make one part versus a serial part, that makes a complete difference to look on the, the investor to buy a new tool. And uh, for sure also, is, is it only one application I need to do on that serial part? Maybe for hundreds and hundreds of parts? Or is it a very versatile usage? Because of uh, I have uh, various work pieces, maybe I have ver various materials I need to machine, and uh, that drives you maybe a co to a complete different decision. Just think about my car example. You know, if, if you just want to have one car, and needs to do, you want to go everywhere with one car, that means to be a big compromise, it won't be the fastest. Uh, maybe it won't be the, the, the biggest one. Uh, just, just think about it. it it's, a, it's a very, very helpful uh, comparison. And for sure, if you, if you look uh, with, with economy, it's also important to look on cost per part versus a buying price. So if, if the tool is, is the most uh, um, uh, expensive thing you need to buy, or is it really that you can cost per part uh, really on, on this kind of uh, invest and uh, can, can judge about this kind of thing. Yeah, to make it a bit more easier to make a choice. I, I try to, to really um, make a table to, to, to give you a guidance, which tool of our portfolio can do what. And um, if you see that table, by the way, the table, uh, we, we put it also uh, in, in our attachments. You, you can, can download this table and uh, uh, use it for, for your own usage. It's for sure not really a table which says 100%, you, you can do this and that you cannot do at all. It's, it's a kind, kind of rating what we try to do here. So if you see really a high performance tool like BSM 890 and uh, it had here these three dots, um, and you see this one um, with just two dots, maybe for that operation for VSM 22, it's, it's been capable. Maybe it's the best performance you can have. So it's it's not generally saying the victory high performance tool is, that, that's not a victory high performance tool, or even if you look at these tools. Yeah. Maybe for that operation, it's the best tool you can get. Yeah. That, that, that's an approach how, how you need to look on that. Also, if you look through workpiece materials, yeah, if you look through the capability on steel and cast iron, why I put here cast iron two dots on that and uh, not three dots, there's for sure a lot of room for discussion. Yeah? And, uh, but, but our experience says, well, this is working brilliant in, in cast iron, 
but but if, if you want to have the highest high performance on a serial part maybe it's not the, the first choice on it uh, maybe you, you need to, to uh, need to look on something really specific for cast iron this is somehow uh, the table you need to understand yeah and uh, we can go through through many of these these uh, topics but but the problem is always you know if if you don't have really an example on explicit explicit example really to go through it 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 might be very challenging to to really explain it from 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 this perspective where where we are today and um, that's the reason i i i will will guide you to the next step or next level of support um which is the digital one I mentioned that in the beginning. So um, you can use for sure also our digital assistant Novo to really um, understand where you want to use the tools and uh, which kind of benefits, which kind of approach um, you have to, uh, to use. There are generally speaking two ways to use this Novo. The first one is really to search for a tool in the electronic catalog. And the second one is to use a tool advisor, which is a very powerful uh, electronic um, assistant. When I say um, go through the tool and search in the electronic catalog, um, then I mean, if, if you open the, this kind of uh, overview on, on Novo, you see that you go through indexable milling and then to shoulder mills if you are sure that you already need a shoulder mill and then then on the right side appears a filter a section where you can you really put in filters and the first answers to the question i mentioned in the few slides before you can already put in to really see what would be from our perspective the best tool for this kind of usage based on the information you put in right now the second and very interesting way to find a certain guidance through all of these kind of shoulder mills is our <clears throat> tool advisor. With a tool advisor, you have really the chance to get a good advice and a good recommendation on um, the right tool and also the right combination of grade, geometry, and this, the third step also on cutting data in this kind of um, assistant. For sure, additionally, you need to have this information basically what is necessary to go through that. You to go through that very, uh, let's say, structured. Means you start for sure with milling, you want to go to milling, and then you go through pocket milling, shoulder milling, you want to mill a slot, surface, profile, chamfer, and uh, 3D profiles. And uh, the, the interesting part of it, for sure, it won't guide you only to indexable milling tools. It can happen that you will be guided also to solid carbide tools. That's the space for sure on the information you give the, 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 the digital tool advisor in the next steps. After you choose one of these kind of operations, you will guide it through here a questionnaire where you can put in all the information. So I, in my example, I, I started with shoulder mill here. Yeah, and we were then going here through these kind of fields. And uh, when you put in your, your, your cursor, uh, here in, in one of these fields, it's been explained what is meant by that on the right side. There's also a small uh, draft drawing just to understand which kind of um, operation has been meant or information has been necessary at that point. And then you go through that step by step and you see it's starting here with, with the material and then for sure depth of cut and the, the, the shoulder widths. Um, you can also add here a machine information. That's a bit a tricky thing because we cannot have every machine and every information of the machine in these kind of database. So you need to, to define a machine upfront if you want to choose it right here. 
So that is one of the challenges. We cannot really, uh, uh, well, um, finally find an answer to because, you know, on these topics of the machine and also the clamping, we cannot define that in that way we, we would like to. There's still a certain point of um, experience necessary. If you put in all this information, went through that, then you get for sure an answer. And you see that would be the answer, the first answer on the based uh, on the information you entered. And there's always a list ranked a bit by, by the by the economy and uh, for sure the performance. This is the main driver. And that's um, also the reason that you have here on first uh, ranking here, uh, BSM 11, and the second, you have uh, BSM 890, and the third will be BSM 490. Hmm. And uh, the difference, you won't see that in that way. You need to go through the details and why this tool has been chosen by the tool advisor. Yeah, and again, then the next level of tree choosing starts uh, because, as I mentioned in the beginning, we cannot have all information of the, the clamping and the machine that must be added and by your experience and by, by knowledge. And then to the next step, you, you will guide through the tool and the right cutting data. Okay. We know now that we have a certain way to find a tool. To explain it a bit better, I will show you some of our tools and we'll try to explain what kind of specific benefits or features will guide you through this kind of um, yeah, toolings and uh, also guide you to the best one for your operation. And uh, you see, we have a, a lot of uh, main uh, families, what I listed here. So I listed here M680, I listed here M M690, our high-speed aluminum shoulder mill VHSC, our very versatile VSM1117 platform, VSM490 and VSM890. And uh, for sure, the, the, you can do with everybody, you can, you, you can do shoulders with that. Yeah, that's clear. But if it comes really to spe more specific things, then you need to understand why it's the best for which kind of operation. Starting with the M680, and I know you will say, oh, I know these slides already. This is a catalog. I, wow, that's boring. Yeah. But I will guide you a bit deeper in that. Yeah, because we, we try to give you in that um, catalog page or in this, this uh, marketing page what you can see here a lot of informations and uh, base, starting from there it's you, you have a certain overview which kind of operations you can do with a v uh, with, with the m680 so you cannot do a helix interpolation uh, with a m680 uh, you cannot do a, a a strong ramping process with m680 you might say well so uh, it's not for me the best tool because I need ramping. I need uh, helix interpolation. But I can tell you, a lot of people say, well, for me it's important. I need to have a very reliable insert and a very reliable tool where you can go permanently a high feed rate. And uh, I can switch on my machine now and I come back later, half a day later, and my, my 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 part is done without uh, having any 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 challenges without having any concerns on um, tool life on stability on all these kind of uh, concerns I could have and then the m 680 is extremely good so means we have a really good tool for first choice in in, in steel cast iron stainless classical operations yeah, when these classical operations meet also high expectations on reliability and tool life. Even when you go on high feed rate means on high metal removal rates. This is your first choice for it. Going to the next tool, just to make, make the difference. This is a complete 
opposite tool of an M680, VHSC. If you look on, on versatile needs, this is not really the specialist. It's really just for aluminum only. There is no insert available for, for, for steel or cast iron. There is no opportunity to go to high temp alloys with this tool because that's a specialist for aluminum. But if you want to go on aluminum, and have the expectation on extreme high feed rates and aluminum is something really completely different than compared to steel and uh, uh, stainless and cast iron um, um, operations, then you really need to understand um, that is the perfect specialist for it. You can do nearly everything with this kind of tool. It means a lot of kind of various operations, 3D milling, plunging, helical operations, ramping, uh, all that is possible because this is optimized for these kind of uh, operations. Yeah? Because of the insert shape is like that, because of um, the spe specific design of the tool holder, which, which allows a uh, very high uh, RPMs and uh, spindle uh, load. Uh, also, uh, it's very universal. You can adapt it perfectly to your aluminum approach with different lead angles, which is very often necessary on um, uh, uh, aluminum parts. Um, and also, uh, it has safety functions to really make sure that the insert has been held always in the, the cutter body. That's because this kind of tool runs on extreme high RPMs, and uh, which is in, in, in stainless or in cast iron uh, or in stainless still not really necessary. Yeah, going through the, the next one, which is the most versatile one in our portfolio. Beside the most versatility of the tool means in steel, in stainless, in cast iron, in aluminium, in uh, uh, in other materials, up to Hardox maybe, you can use that tool. And it gives you not only the high versatility, what we show here in these icons, and these icons are always a good help, really, in the catalogs, in, in, in documentations of the tool, really to make sure that you, you find your direction of, of that tool. What it can do also is, it, it can create a very good, precise 90 degree capability and has also very high ramping angle. So it would be the opposite idea of an M680. Uh, M680 is a working horse, very, very straight, very reliable. You don't need to look after it. And this can do here a lot of different things. It means not it's not reliable, but you can do complete other things uh, what, what allows really um, to, to use the tools in a complete different approach. And if you have a cap capable machine and uh, you need to do these kind of operations very often on various ma materials, then it's maybe the first choice uh, really to, to, to go through it. What, what, what I mean with that, I, I will show you in our, our uh, marketing video. Um, I will go, jump through that uh, a, a little bit faster um, because that we already know. What, what you can do very easily, for sure, is, is shoulder milling. Yeah? It's, it's nothing special on shoulder milling. You can do that with an M680 as well. Yeah? That's not, not a, not, not a uh, problem. Yeah? But not only. Yeah? You can go through a lot of applications, uh, side milling with a very high depth of cut. Also, that could be an M680. But the, stra the, the straightness of the, 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 uh, the side is much better. Although it's uh, much closer to, to a precise 90 degree. What is also very important that you also can do a helix interpolation with that. Uh, this is what you cannot do with an M680. So this is the approach, and for sure the inserts are a bit smaller, means you can go on smaller um, workpieces or workpiece uh, uh, geometries, really to make sure that you have really a good. Um, operation done. 
Yeah, jumping to the next level. Um, we start from M680. And uh, now we have an insert here, what we can see, VSM490. What, what are the benefits here compared to M680? Um, the first benefit is for sure, most visible one. We have four cutting edges instead of two cutting edges. Means um, compared to the, to the amount of carbide that's been used for an insert, you have the double usage. So four times instead of two times. So it could be, or that's more economic. But there is a certain price to, to, to pay for it. Yeah. So it, 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 it for sure um, has a smaller space where the insert takes uh, the seat. Yeah. Because you see on the other side, it's always the same seat and uh, it's, it's a bit smaller compared to an M680. But the benefit of that, it, it, it combines a bit the, the, the the advantages of an M680 and the VSM11. What I mean is a very precise design for the 90 degree capabilities. The rest is what you can see on this kind of picture is the same with looking like uh, M680. You might ask why do we have M680 and VSM490? Because there is a difference yeah, in the wall quality and there is a difference in reliability and feed rate. So because of that pocket seat, uh, you need to reduce a tiny bit the feed rate and uh, that won't be reliable as an M680 because of the single-sided design. What I want to say with, with 90 degree capabilities is that we, when you use uh, the insert half of the depths, you get a very precise 90 degree. What means 90 degree compared to, a, to an M680? I will show you in, in the video. Um, I know, again, that's a marketing video and we go, go through the, the, the marketing part a bit faster. Um, that shows a bit what we what we mean with this 90 degree capability. So there is a, a stepless design here and uh, you, you will, won't see that really very, very strong that there are steps for sure left, yeah? but they are so tiny that they are acceptable for most of the work pieces. And this is now a very interesting part uh, because this is an M680 and we made this part here already with the M680 in this video, that, though it's, it's cut, like you can see that as a direct comparison. So this is the M3 uh, uh, 680 uh, lab lines, here, what you can see here, it means we have here three lanes of M680 already been done. And then we will show with half of the depths of the BSM 490 here, how it's been done. We are going here on a stainless material, which is um, not the uh, easiest one. So a 304L uh, with, with cutting data, which are pretty common. So you see the depth of cut is six millimeters, width of cut is seven millimeters on both sides. Just showing that for you. So step by step, you can see that uh, it's been the second uh, portion here of the um, the shoulder has been machined. And you see so the steps are complete different. And uh, look, look at the watch. You see there are for sure steps left, but see what was happening on our M680. Right. Strong steps compared to the VSM 490. Going through that again. Nearly no steps here visible, tiny steps and 0.01, 0.02 steps. And here we have really huge steps. This is a major difference, what you can see between these tools. Looking at the next level which would be a VSM 890. So the next level is not only the visible thing with eight cutting edges, uh, we increased really the stepless solution design. Not only because we can do that now with a higher depth of cut, with uh, ne nearly 10 millimeter here. It's also from most of the experience I saw 
that the, the capability of the, these 90 V is getting even one step better. So it's very interesting what you can do with a VSM 890. Also, uh, for sure, it's a very stable and thick inset, and you can go a very high feed rate, uh, similar in the way like uh, M680. And you have the advantage of eight cutting edges. Um, for sure, you won't go on a on a level like VSM 11 or 17 with strong ramping capabilities. But especially this insert is extremely good for plunge operation. You remember this operation, axial direction, and making here these steps really to, to, to get out rid of material on the side. Uh, this is extremely uh, ideal for that. Why? We have a very long cutting edge. Uh, compared to, to the other uh, shoulder mills, we have here a very nine, nearly 9.8 nine, uh, millimeter long cutting edge. It really makes it much more easier to use this cutting edge for plunge milling. You remember for the other tools for two cutting edge, um, for sure you cannot go uh, further than, than here because there's no carbide left. Uh, so you cannot machine with a tool holder. You need to, to use uh, the carbide in, in the cutting edge. And that's the reason why this tool is extremely good uh, possible to use in these plunge milling operations. For sure, it's versatile on very, very materials. Uh, you see, we have a, a medium insert, we have a light insert, and we have also aluminium insert. And you might ask why you have an aluminium insert and you have still a high tech aluminium tool. Again, not everybody is using everyday aluminium. For those, maybe the aluminum cutter is the right choice because they maybe have also the environment, the right machine, the work pieces, which need to have a high tech tool like that. But most of the, 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 the customers do just have, just in, 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 in brickets, uh, just have a very universal machine. So you cannot go on RPMs like uh, 20 or 30,000, which a tool like uh, the VHSF might, might be used. You go for, for then for VSM, 890 maybe because on the next day you have an operation on stainless steel and then you have the tool already in-house you just need to change inserts might be much more helpful yeah what mod means a stepless solution i mentioned that already we can now go depths without steps up to 9.8 millimeters and uh, that makes really the stepless um, capability much much better than than even before and uh, also what is very interesting although that is a pure roughing tool um, the created surface quality on even on on roughing is very high not only the shoulder is very good also face is very good and if we, we if you remember at the first picture what we can say about uh, face mills and uh, its quality it's coming now uh, to a ver very versatile tool because uh, most of the benefit is, is given by face mills with a number of cutting edges, number of usages. So if you have an M1200, you, you have 12, 12 usage, usages uh, compared to the piece of carbide you are using for that. Uh, then looking back to, to shoulder mills on a classical way, have just two cutting edge, may, maybe four. Uh, so it's, it's, it's much more uh, the look then on economy. In, in economy. And uh, then, then you have a very interesting compromise with the eight cutting edge insert with the included facet, viper facet, which creates a very nice surface, gets very good on shoulder milling. And you look, but when we create these kind of uh, face here, um, it's, a, it's a tool steel, uh, 12312. Um, and you see, we, we are not going really explicit extreme um, uh, cutting data for, for finishing. These cutting data are really for um, for roughing processes, uh, and uh, you see the surface quality of RA of one point uh, oh point one one six or RZ one one point twenty two is extremely good for these kind of operations. Yeah, and coming, uh, you know, and again, I will use um, the the marketing video of it of the VSM eight ninety. What, what kind of versatile operations you can do? Uh, and we, we, are, we are using here a material like a, um, a 128, 12842, um, 
a steel, which is pretty good to machine. And uh, we, we can show here a, a lot of operations you can do. What's very interesting is really, for sure, the classical uh, face mill operations with an extreme good surface quality, what, what results here. Shoulder mill operations, where you have these step design. Uh, and uh, nearly, uh, you see already in this uh, example, uh, some shadows or the, the, the pattern you see is, is already visible. But I can tell you if, you, if you measure that, that's really not, not uh, measurable. Uh, plunge milling, as I mentioned that before, that's extremely feasible for this kind of uh, pool. Uh -huh. And for sure, the classical uh, things like a full slot, um, what is for sure easy to do for a tool like that uh, with a high depth of cut. Yeah, and also um, dynamic milling, as I mentioned that before, like, like a solid carbide mill, we can do for sure that. That's for sure a manual process. What we programmed here is not used by a CAD CAM solution, but also that's been possible for, for, for tools like that. Yeah. I will guide you a bit through some examples what I what I collected through the years. The first one is really an aluminum part. As I mentioned before, uh, we, we, we are using here in that example, not really a, a high speed aluminum tool like the VHSM. We are using a very universal tool like a VSM 890, but uh, the customer wants to have on this aluminum, which is a very soft aluminum, um, a, a very good surface quality, roughing and finishing, and not only on the surface, also on the side. And we did that with the VSM 890, just with different cutting data on face and the um, speed rate. Just look on the, the cutting data, what we used here uh, on the 99.5% aluminum. Um, a speed rate of uh, 1500, uh, mainly limited by the, by the machine, um, because we saw that the machine gets not uh, very dynamic afterwards. Um, very high feed rate per tooth, very high depth of cut with eight millimeters. Uh, for the side milling, we used uh, 10 millimeters as side engagement, and we, we are running through that. Unfortunately, with aluminum, you cannot see so much on uh, the operation because of the spray of the, the coolant. <clears throat> but the outcome was very, very good. And when you see this is a shoulder with three steps, you, you just don't see the steps and you cannot feel the steps if you go with, with your thumbnail about it. And uh, this is a very interesting thing. Um, as, as we, we thought nobody will believe what, what we did there. Uh, we, we made also a sidewall quality check and we, we put a, a watch on that and uh, trying to move the watch uh, back and forth and up and down and left and right. And uh, the watch seems not to, to move at all at that point, which is very interesting. So I guess you will always say, uh, well, the, the watch is not touching the wall. I, I, I know that trick, yeah? but uh, for sure the wall has been touched by that. And now we are going through a, a certain uh, row of examples. Uh, that's a steel part. Um, and you see that's uh, side milling, um, roughing and finishing with, with high uh, capability. Serial parts with long extensions. Approach was here really to go through with a long extension. Um, you see the next problem here, we have a clamping which is very weak. Um, this is the only uh, uh, way the, the parts can be clamped with this uh, kind of uh, uh, on top clampings. Uh, and uh, for sure, the, 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 the big risk is to put too much forces on it. So the, 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 the approach was not to have too high forces on the workpiece, have a high feed rate, have a high metal removal rate, uh, because it's a serial part. And uh, the process must ju just running day in, day out, very reliable. Um, therefore, we, 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 we were choosing VSM 890 here at that point. This is an example uh, to show the versat versatility on these kind of tools. Uh, that's on Hardox 500, a hardened material like H1, H2. Um, we go with, with the same tool again. You see that that's a, the kind of versatility. You, you have these kind of tools yeah? um, with very good cutting data, uh, very, very interesting. 
and also the approach is having not really here any steps on the wall uh, and uh, that we can can achieve very easily here and that uh, there were no no steps visible and also not measurable yeah i know that that might be not really end up in this kind of um, uh, question we raised up in the beginning what is now the best shoulder mill and uh, i know that uh, we, we cannot give an answer here at that point uh, and uh, for sure our shoulder mill is the most versatile milling tool so you see you can do a lot of things and you need to understand a bit why we are do using this one or that one for one or the other operations I hope I could guide you a bit through this kind of uh, jungle you know, because uh, the big variety makes it really challenging to find the best shoulder mills for your needs. Yeah? It's uh, really a challenge and it depends on the, the needs. Uh, you really need to, to guide through, go through all that and try to, to find the right approach. Yeah? And uh, really it's extremely helpful to have a clear uh, understanding what, what is the need? What is the environment of the workpiece? Clamping machine is extremely important. And last but not least, if you are a distributor, for sure, it's extremely important. What, what is, it, is the customer asking for? Is he asking for productivity? Is he asking for more tool life? Is he asking for more versatility? Is he asking for a cheaper tool? Well, all that must be considered. And uh, in the end, uh, also, it's uh, very, very interesting to, to find that guidance. And for sure, that goes along with a lot of experience. And uh, we want to share these kind of experience with you, not only with the, today's webinar, for sure, we give you also um, other help and support uh, in other webinars, for instance, like, like uh, how, how important that is, especially for, for, for a shoulder mill, also to, to choose the right cutting data with, with speed and feed. And uh, think about the, the chip thickness. Uh, that's extremely important for, for using uh, shoulder mills. And from that point on, I would uh, uh, give you also some, some more um, ways to, to, to contact us. For sure, you can contact me personally. Uh, and uh, for sure, uh, it's possible to use uh, the Novo uh, website, vianovo.com, uh, which is a di digital cutting tool assistant. Also on our website, you, you will find a lot of information, um, also for sure on, on digital catalogs or printed catalogs. Um, if, if you have still questions uh, and uh, you don't get, get in contact with me, um, you, you can also go in contact with our technical uh, team, uh, which is a customer application service called CAS team. Um, I, I put uh, in also here the, uh, the, the email address of them. Also, you can then, uh, just, just go through our webpage to them or also uh, through LinkedIn on, uh, and YouTube. Uh, it's also possible. For sure, social media channels are always uh, a good way to, to contact us, to, to ask questions and to get uh, closer to us and uh, um, fi find the right way. Um, the, the kind of videos I showed today, they, they are visible on, on our YouTube channel. Um, and you will find also our, our webinar step by step uh, there on YouTube. So also uh, there, there will be help for you and uh, hope um, we can help you a bit or light a bit the, the way through the shoulder milling portfolio. Yeah, now it's a, the question, Isabel, are there upcoming some, some questions in the, the, the chat? Did you, uh, did you see some questions coming up there? Let's see, Mike. Uh, I'm I'm checking now, and in the meantime, um, it's good that you mentioned it uh, because I I added our YouTube link before in uh, in the chat. Uh, we we are very excited because last week uh, our first uh, webinar video is uh, was live on YouTube, so you can now find. Uh, I I added it also in. Uh, in the chat, uh, you can find a great webinar that uh, that Mike presented uh, some months ago on uh, stainless steel and high temp alloys. And uh, sooner we will have more videos. So 
Uh, we know that you are busy. We know that it's not always easy to follow our webinars live. That's why we want to help you and make sure that we we add some of our, you know, also uh, most popular videos because this was a very very popular webinar on YouTube. And uh, I we know that you wanted it, and we we listened to you. Uh, Mike, we we have a question. How many tools do I need? How many tools? Tools. Uh, teeth. It depends on, uh, teeth. It depends on the, 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 the approach you have. I mean, <clears throat> the, the problem is you cannot answer that, that answer generally uh, because it depends on, um, first of all, of the workpiece material. Second of all, on the operation you need to do. So depth of cut is very important. Width of cut is important. Um, then for sure the capability of the machine. Um, what kind of spindle you have, power, RPM, torque, that's also very important. And therefore, I guide you, if you have these kind of general questions, collect first of, the, first of all the data, what you want to do, and then go through, maybe through us, to, through Novo, and try to, to find out which kind of tool is feasible to you. A general uh, advice would be to have not more than two to four inserts at the same time in the workpiece. Uh, because above it can be challenging for sure if you go a full slot it's uh, it, it's a bit more, bit more challenging then you um, should reduce a bit um, the, the number of teeth if you have uh, just side milling you can increase the number of teeth um, and uh, uh, go maybe from that guidance a, a bit uh, I hope that that answers somehow the question yeah and I also I did the email if if uh, you want to send us more information as mike said we can give you a more accurate response uh, so did you did you download our guide to shoulder milling let us know if uh, if you downloaded it in the meantime because mike uh, really really worked hard to to make it for you and we hope uh, it's going to be useful Do you have more questions or even comments on on the webinar if uh, if now it's clear for you you have more information to to choose uh, the right tool uh, if you need more information uh, so we can we can provide it to you Mike, I guess you, it was too clear, so <laughs> there are no questions. It was either too clear or too unclear. Yes, <laughs> exactly. Now, I, I know anyway. it's a very challenging uh, uh, thing to, to choose a shoulder mill, uh, and uh, we, we're trying to give you some guidance on that. As I said in the beginning, there is no clear answer. What is the best one? Because that's always aligned to the, uh, the environment, the operation, the workpiece. <laughs> And all of that. Yeah. That's right. But anyway, um, if you have no no other questions, you can always send them to us. Um, maybe you think of something tomorrow or later today. We we will send you the recording of the webinar tomorrow, so you will receive the email with a recording, and there you can just answer the email and write uh, your questions or even any comments. Um, we we also have a survey after the webinar. Please make sure that you add your comments and your rating because it's it's important for us. We always read them. We always listen to you to try and make our trainings better. Thank you very much, Mike, for for another great training. Thank you for being here today, and uh, we look forward to seeing you in the next uh, training. Have a great uh, rest of day. Thank you very much. Also from my side, have a nice day.